Hello, friends. It's Malk. Welcome back. TV Binge Box, the podcast, the video thing. The, I don't even know what this is anymore, but I'm here to help you make better choices about the TV that you watch when you stream it, when you watch it on your big tube, or you just get on the internet and make it happen. Uh, I'm Steve Mock. I write for TV Black Box, uh, speak about TV on radio all over the place, and probably have annoyed you on the internet about my opinions on television. And hopefully, this will be no different. Uh, we are back for a brand new season, something that I'm going to keep trying this year. And I would love to know the shows that you're watching. I would love to know the things that you are fired up about. You can either tell us about it in the TV Binge Box podcast gang, Facebook group, or on Insta, TV underscore Binge Box, or hit me up either at TV underscore Binge Box on Twitter, or at Steve Molk on Twitter, or Molk at the radio.au on Mastodon. There's just so many ways to keep in touch and talk about TV. I am super excited to bring you today's episode with a whole bunch of great content that you can just sit down and let wash over you uh, during this great Christmas New Year period. Happy New Year, friends. The first show that we're going to talk about is this one, The Last Year of Television. I don't think it'd be vulgar of me to admit that it's been a big, wet, messy year for Australian television. Tears, tantrums, dog content, and in the case of Andrew O'Keefe, all three. Neighbours ended, maths didn't, and then neighbours also didn't. But let us empty out the soggy cardboard box we've just packed up and review the horrible mess we've now made upon the carpet. That wet mess in question is the year 2022. I'm Mitch McTaggart, and this is the last year of television. So The Last Year in Television is brought to us by Mitch McTaggart, who you might have seen previously uh, on SBS doing a whole bunch of stuff over there. Now, thanks to the great crew at Binge, Mitch has brought us The Last Year of Television 2022. It is a brand new hour-long special. It's available right now on Binge for you to jump on and go and watch. Go now. Come back to this. I'll still be here. Mitch is there on Binge. Go see it. Uh, it's really funny. Mitch does a month-by-month -month breakdown on all of the big things, both hilarious and nefarious that happen on TV. You'll want to check it out because it is honestly a whole bunch of fun. He, uh, look, I put it down that it's basically his shit posted opinions uh, on, on television and what rolls out, but there's some good stuff. He doesn't just give it all crap. There is some great stuff that he talks about. And I agree with him. The best thing on television, you watch the show to, to check it out. He also has an excellent theory on neighbors going away and coming back. Definitely hang in and check all of it out. Uh, Mitch is hilarious. He's a Melbourne-based comedian uh, who has done this kind of thing before. People who know his work will have seen the last year of television, either 2020 or 2021, or his series, The Backside of Television. And great news, the people of Binge have picked up all of those shows as well. So you can not only jump on and watch this year's last year of television, you can watch the past two years and his three-episode series, The Backside of Television, and I have it on good authority that there's a new series coming uh, to binge later this year, and that's going to be brilliant. Mitch is hilarious. He offers informed opinions, but he does it out of love, and I think that's what makes it so joyful. It's not just people crapping all over television, which, to be frank, is very easy to do. He offers up some insight, and there's absolute joy that comes through all of it. I had to stop it so many times, pause it to just catch up on a joke that I missed or let the joke that, that I was laughing at play out it is, it's that enjoyable. The Last Year of Television from Mitch McTaggart is available right now on Binge. You'll definitely want to check it out. But what, guys, that's just the first show that we're talking about in today's episode of TV Binge Box. Here's the next one. The biggest challenge with cold cases is finding out who people really were back then. It's important I get to know Isabel. A lot of time has passed. People's memories, they fade. But this, Isabel, she won't lie. In 2019, I predict that Ashford will be still full of predators. In every way. This was not a crime of opportunity. It's personal. And there are people here I trusted gonna go and nothing can stop her but now i know they feel on suffering a 
time capsule to be opened in 25 years. One day, I will expose them. That's why it's in Someone we trust took her from us. That's Big hero from Brisbane. You know who might have done it? Everyone is lying to me. Even our own father is lying to me. We felt pain like ass. They say that darkness gives birth to monsters. Turn on the light. And they're gone. Secrets. You got too many. Unforgettable. Black Snow is a new um, six-part drama series coming to stand on New Year's Day. So it's out in full, all of the episodes available for you to watch from New Year's Day. It is an incredible new Aussie drama that uh, tells an amazing tale of a 25-year-old cold case, a young girl, Isabel, uh, was killed on the night of her graduation from year 12. And Travis Fimmel, Ragnar Lothbrook himself, uh, is uh, the cold case detective that picks up this case um, to try and solve it because her, her body was found. They need to work out how, why. Why did this young girl needlessly die? Um, it is, look, it's a really, really good like murder mystery who done it. Um, there's some great performances. The cast, I don't know if you saw in the trailer, as I said, Fimmel stars as our um, our key copper who's trying to sort it all out. There's a little bit of backwards and forwards time, jumping back to 25 years ago. It's centred around her death and the fact that leading up to her death uh, for Isabel, there was a, um, a time capsule put in the ground at the high school and we actually open with the reveal of this time capsule and the fact that it unearths a whole bunch of pain and a whole bunch of uh, trauma for friends of Isabel and, and those sorts of things. The cast is amazing. Brooke Satchwell, always dependable. Alexander England is excellent. Um, Travis Fimmel, as I said, Rob Carlton. Um, there's a list of great Aussie actors in there and a couple of first timers. Um, Talija Blackman Corowa and Jemison Power. Now, Talija plays Isabel, the young Isabel. We obviously, um, that's all we see of her. Um, but then Jemison, I think, uh, if I've got this correct, Jemison plays her younger sister, Hazel, all grown up. So Hazel is back in town. She's a single mum, but her daughter lives with her parents in the fictional town of Ashford, filmed around Proserpine in North Queensland. And, and we get to see some of that relationship. Why is Hazel, you know, off you know, working in, I think it's Brisbane, while her daughter's at home with her parents and who's a dad and all of those sorts of things start to play out. Some great performances from those new characters. I, I recommend you hang in it. I will say up front that there's a couple of problems that I have with not not necessarily the script. I think the script is pretty solid. The performances are pretty great. Fimmel mumbles a bit. He's just a little bit of a whispery mumbler guy that I kind of, there, there are a few times where I went, hang on, this is, you might need to put your closed captions on and have a have a watch listen while you while you check it out on Stan. Um, I was also a little bit disappointed with some of the loose ends, the way they were tied up in the final episode, um, particularly some of the relationship stuff that was kind of it happened and then it didn't happen, and then there was stuff that was a little bit quick and and it didn't make a lot of sense to me. I particularly was a little bit struck with, and I acknowledge in the context of the story that Hazel's daughter growing up with her grandparents would have heard a lot about her auntie Isabel, but she absolutely never met her. And she is way too emotionally invested in auntie Isabel and who auntie Isabel could have been or might've been. It's nitpicky. Um, I definitely want to encourage you to see it. It is six episodes. It's a pretty easy watch. It is a great then and now I think they struggle a little bit with the, the de-aging or even the re-aging of some of the older cast members like Rob Carlton uh, and those sorts of people who played dads, you know, then and uh, dads still now, they just look the same. They're not any less old then than they were now. So look, picky, picky stuff from me. Black Snow, six episodes, all of them available on Stan. It is absolutely worth checking out. I'd love to hear what you think. So hit me up on all of the places to say, hey, Malcolm, I watched it and I thought Black Snow was excellent. It brings to light something that is a, a dark spot 
just frankly on on Australia's history, and and that is this acknowledgement that, um, particularly in North Queensland around cane, you know, sort of businesses, as well as you know, in some of our fruit picking areas and those sorts of things, there have been some people who um, have taken advantage of Pacific Islander uh, people who've come over to work and earn money. Of course, they want to send it back to their families. It's a process called blackbirding, where they get them over here, they take their passports, they have no capacity to go anywhere. The the you know the property owners have got got them by the short and curlies. Um, so it, it talks a bit about that as well, and and recognises that it's not all sort of hunky dory. However, that there absolutely are lots of Pacific Islander people who have made a home in Australia and have helped us grow and create an, an incredible country for what it is. Uh, and we see that in in Isabel and Hazel's family. Uh, who their grandparents, uh, uh, you know, come over um, uh, from, I think it's from Vanuatu, from the Pacifica, uh, and have settled and Isabel and, and Hazel are, are first generation Australians uh, in that regard. So it's it's a whole new sort of uh, extra layer. Fimmel has an excellent backstory, his character. So it's definitely something to watch, something to chew on. Like I said, hit me up and let me know. Black Snow, six episodes, Stan, New Year's Day, check it all out. But... That is not all that we are going to talk about. Have a look at Go, 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 go! We went over the plan five times. I got the package, didn't I? We need a pickup. Hang on. Grab the light. This is the top team. The rogue clones on the run from the Empire, huh? Hello. How juicy. The Empire's growing stronger. We should be doing more. You want to really be free? Then pull off this heist and you can have a future. Rumors are more and more clones have been questioning the order. Then they're traitors, like the Jedi. You all gave up everything because of me. We made the right choice, Omega. But there are others out there who need our help. What sort of treachery is this? Stay back! seeks to establish peace and order throughout the galaxy. Peace? Peace was never an option. We're soldiers. We do what needs to be done. Move! You know what makes us different? We make our own choices. What do you need, Rex? Any chance I could use you for a mission? Parents, The Bad Batch, new season, streaming January 4th, only on Disney+. Plus. Oh, look, I'm a Star Wars nerd from way back, and I'm absolutely deep in this. The Bad Batch Season 2 is coming to Disney+, Plus on Wednesday, the 4th of January. Uh, it will meter it out across probably about 10 weeks. It starts with a double episode on Wednesday. Now, this is the second season, uh, so we pick up... From where season one left off, no real spoilers, but here are our ragtag bunch of um, specialist former clone troopers who have become mercenaries, effectively, guns for hire, after they were saved or they didn't become bad stormtroopers or, or bad clone troopers that we saw out of the Clone Wars and into Revenge of the Sith in the movie. Look, I'm getting deep Star Wars nerding here, okay, so you'll have to, you'll have to bear with me. Dave Filoni, who's responsible for creating the Clone Wars animated series is and running the Star Wars universe now, uh, along with Kathleen Kennedy, is responsible for the Bad Batch, this animated series about these guys, and also young Omega, the last of the clones, a specialist clone. She's a girl, for starters, not a boy. Um, and what that looks like, the fact that they're now out on the run from the Empire, they're doing jobs for money, what does it look like? This is not Andor, where you get that wonderfully sort of slow burn, well paced drama. And I might talk about Andor at a, a later stage because it was absolutely one of the series for mine uh, this year, season one of it on Disney Plus. 
This is up front, in your face, Star Wars, Stormtroopers, robots. I mean, there's a freaking Wookiee Jedi in it. Like, come on. It's going to be so great. I'm so keen to see this. Um, my son and I have bonded over this series. He was a huge Clone Wars fan as a little boy and grown up. Now we're watching uh, The Bad Batch together. D. Bradley Baker returns as the voice of all of the clones. And you probably heard in that clip a voice familiar. It's uh, Wanda Sykes comes in for series two. She plays a character. Rhea Perlman, sorry, Rhea Perlman returns, as does Michelle Ang, and a list of all of a whole bunch of other people. This is brilliant, stylized animation in the Star Wars universe, set before uh, A New Hope. So it's a it's a great tale building up to sort of where we get, you know, in the, the great greatest Star Wars universe. I can hear some of you already. Mulk, I hate Star Wars. I don't care about it. Fine. I'll stop banging on about it. It is absolutely brilliant. I've been fortunate enough to see the first 14 of 16 episodes coming. Wow. It's brilliant storytelling. And I love the animation style. I love the way they're brought together. They're 20-ish, 20 to 30-minute episodes. So it's great for your small people. They can watch it in the best sense also. It's not super hyper-violent, but there's absolutely those dark overtones of the Empire and, uh, and, and wanting them to do bad things and having to fight and shoot stuff so it's great for you to watch with your your small star wars fans don't start on season two go back and watch season one uh, but there are 16 episodes it starts off with a double episode on wednesday the 4th of january uh you'll be able to watch all 16 as they peter out across disney plus simply delightful there's no bad options for me in this first offering but we have one more show to talk about and guys oh this one has captured my heart Oh my god. I hit a dog. Oh my god. He's gonna survive though, right? He's been struck by a car. It's more of a nudge. You're looking at around twelve thousand dollars. Twelve thousand dollars? It's a dog. That's a lot. You don't gotta keep no other man down. I can't take the dog. No. Yes. Is that a unicycle? Yeah. Yours? Yeah. How long have you been single? A while. Yeah. Destiny to hit this dog. You would have done it with or without me. Oh, good. You bought the dog. Yeah. Her name. Oh. I think you should marry her. Oh, she probably will say yes, mate. We've got this. We've got this. Well, we don't, but you know, your optimism is adorable. Colin from accounts from the mines. Uh, and loins of Harriet Dyer and Patrick Brammel is a brilliant new comedy on available on binge right now. It's been out for a month, eight episodes of look really funny, you know, comedy, single camera on location filmed here in Australia under COVID conditions. So they've absolutely worked their asses off to make it happen. The, the basic premise, as you saw in the trailer, Ashley, who's played by Harriet Dyer, Gordon played by Patrick Brammel, their real life husband and wife, um, meet in the weirdest of circumstances and and are thrust together because of this little dog that Gordon hits uh, because Ashley flashed him. Oh, look, pick a side, whatever. It's, it's, it's really funny, not just in the storytelling between them, their relationship, which I think absolutely benefits from the fact that they're a real-life couple that dated and, and now married, because you get some really sharp, brutal comedy that comes from that where, you know, like some of the, not just the unicycle joke, but there's, there's, there's other stuff that plays through where they are really direct and abrupt in, in a way that I think only a married couple can be um, about their characters or let's be fair, probably about themselves. They are more than ably supported by a great cast. Genevieve Hegney, Michael Logo, uh, Emma Harvey plays uh, Ashley's best friend, Megan. She is off the chain. Uh, very funny. There's some great moments, even just with all of those guys. But then you get to throw in some other great, just brilliant Australian actors, people like Helen Thompson, who plays Ashley's mum, Linnell. She is a piece of work simply hilarious and the i think it's episode six where um gordon and ash come over for dinner with Linnell and her current beau the professor played by darren gilshan and look if you've seen the moody's you 
A, brilliant, but Gilshin and V, Bramall, in, in and of themselves, is hilarious. But Darren Gilshin is just insane. He is so funny. And the jokes that they play, the camera stuff, the he, that he's learning a language online and all of the stuff that comes out, it's real. And it, the most awkward dinner party I think you'll have ever have been to. Part of the comedy plays out really well in this is because we can reflect and react and go, oh, man, I... I've been in that relationship or I've seen that relationship with a mate or I understand how that works. Oh, so good. So apart from Helen Thompson and, and, and Darren Gilson and throw in, if you don't mind, Annie Maynard as Gordon's ex-girlfriend, the vet that they go to. Uh, and then just a casual sprinkling of people like Christy Willen Brown. Very funny, very funny date that she has with Gordon. Uh, and that's so, so great. So look, I, I have just, had so much fun watching uh, Colin from Accounts. And I know that lots of people have jumped in and seen it. There's a big conversation about Colin from Accounts on the TV Binge Box podcast gang Facebook group. Jump along, join in, and let us know what you thought about it. Um, not everyone likes it. And, you know, this is what I love about television these days with all of our options, television, streaming, online, internet stuff. You don't have to like everything that everyone else likes. However there will be things that you'll love that other people loved. And you may even get the opportunity to say, hey, I really watched this show and it was really funny or it's really good. I'd love you to check it out. And others will test it and go, yeah, no, it's not my thing. And others will test it and go, yeah, actually, that was very much my thing. I, I do recall a conversation we had about Colin from Accounts particularly, where I said, hey, look, hang in there. If you just get through the first 10 minutes and you're going, well, I'm not really sure about the show. No, nah, you've got to push in because beyond the incident with the dog, it just absolutely opens up all this kind of multi-threaded comedy, all these connections that get made. It's it's really, really brilliant. And I cannot recommend Colin from Accounts highly enough. That's available on Binge right now, all of the eight episodes there. Look, friends, thank you for joining me. TV Binge Box is back, baby. Let me know, what did you love? What did you disagree with me about my four picks this episode? Remember, that was the last year of television available right now on Binge. We're talking about, um, uh, what was it? Oh, Black Snow, available on stand from New Year's Day, all six episodes. The Bad Batch, starting with the double app on Disney+. Plus. That's season two of The Bad Batch. And Colin from Accounts, all eight episodes available right now on Binge. Did you love them? Did you hate them? Did you check them out on my recommendation? Hit me up. Let me know on Instagram, TV underscore Binge Box. On Facebook, we're on the TV um, Binge Box podcast gang Facebook group. Of course, all of this is going to be posted over at uh, the TV Black Box website, tvblackbox.com.au, or hit me up, malk at theradio.au on Mastodon or Steve Malk, either on Insta or, of course, on Twitter. Friends, what a time we live in when we get to enjoy this kind of content. Oh, so much. I will be back. Um, I'm working on this being weekly. It might be fortnightly. Bear with me. It's going to depend on how much of a chance I get to watch some television, but I would love to talk television with you very regularly. Make sure you tune in. This is TV Binge Box. I'm Steve Malk, and I just love TV. We'll see you next week.